Back in September 2020, we sold our house in the UK, then moved to Normandy in France, where we bought an ancient French farmhouse with various outbuildings, including an old barn, a small cottage with two woodlands, and three and a half acres of pastured land in a beautiful national park area. Follow us on our journey as Budo and I renovate the farmhouse, manage our land and take on many projects for you to enjoy. Let the fun begin. Welcome to Caravan Corner. Bonjour again. Again, we're here. It feels like deja vu. Definitely yeah, feels yeah. like deja vu. I think it's a bit funny this week because um, we did a uh, one in the week, which was Wednesday. Yeah. So that was part one of what we're doing today. Um, so if you haven't seen that, go back and watch that Wednesday's one first. Yeah. Uh, the start of the boxes, and then come and watch this one. <clears throat> um, I was going to say. Well done on the people who guessed it was Oliver Twist <laughs> on that when I was singing along there. One stupid. of our favourite films. But, uh, yeah, I used to love that. Younger. Used to love that as a kid. Um, with Fagan. Yeah, yeah. anyway, so uh, yeah, it was good. You can go, but be back soon. But, yeah, all right, we've done that one. <laughs> anyway, do so um, so this today's one, uh, you're going to see um, Tracy's doing a bit of uh, uh, like, priming I mean, if you like with with the emulsion, so she, emulsion emulsion on the ceiling and also i've done a blind coat uh, which is what you call in the building well that's what tray. it is blind coat i should yeah. have said primer it's blind coats on the walls that are going to be lined and papered and all that is to seal you we've always done that haven't we you yeah. said that's obviously the right thing to do so i've only given one coat and i'm getting more and more excited to get the windows and budo i should yeah, say yeah, to yeah, finish doing the, windows. the windows well on them today you're going to see me uh, sort of putting that what you saw the other day and you're now going to see me putting that together the boxes together um, and you'll see a finished box missing the beads yeah. um, but today I've been making the beads so they'll they'll join up in the next week's one yeah um, we're gonna try I'm not gonna <coughs> promise you but we're gonna try we have got one video in line which is about the tractor but we're gonna try and do another midweek one and a friday one so you're going to get two again next week yeah hopefully um and like i said in the last video we're trying to condense them uh, this series of making a box ash window mm. and you might be able to follow along if you wanted to make one yourself you know uh someone who's you know got the right tools and things and experience uh, with woodwork uh, you, yeah well. you have some experience woodwork but if you want to you don't need to be perfect you know if you want to make one have a go for your shed or something and have that process go through the process and just back watch the video and you you should get it and i mean if you want to know any dimensions or anything yeah. just message me and i can help you, you know? that would be a posh window for a shed wouldn't it well it would be a bit posh for a shed. <laughs> Very talking posh. about the windows uh -oh. now are we allowed to change our minds uh, yes <laughs> yes <laughs> we've um we've talked about different versions of this window mm. and we've listened to some of your suggestions and we've actually come up now we've we've talked i was talking about getting light <laughs> in and certain things but it's it's got to look right and yeah. it's got to it's got to be in proportion it's very important on when you look at a window and especially a, uh, a box ash window that when you look at it the panes are narrower than they are long so they're longer but narrower yeah. and that's the proportions right um you don't want them square or oblong you know that way and that way so what we're going to go for now is, is this a hundred percent? I think it is, right? Yes. It's hundred percent. And it'll be good for you guys to watch this because I'm gonna make a six over six, right? So you get three in a line, three in a line underneath, that's on one sash and the same on the bottom sash. Um, and then the middle 
and then you've got your middle yeah, row that meets, right? Your, yeah. your meeting rounds, right? Yeah. But what you will see is, is you'll see how I scribe the the glazing be, uh, bars. So when I make up all the glazing bars, mm. I scribe them over each mould and tenon them in as well at the same time. So it's quite intricate work and it's quite interesting. <laughs> Um, but you wouldn't need to do that if you was practicing now having a go of these. You just make a plain window yeah. and put it in. But also, we're going to put some nice horns on the bottom of the sash, top sash, yeah. so it gives it that finish as well. So it's really traditional English style. Um, but will look French when you actually. Yeah, look at the it window. will look. It will match some of the windows around here because they've got. We've seen these uh, three, 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 yeah. or four, four, five, ten, ten. Yeah. Uh, it's it's all different, right? So hopefully it will fit in. It'll be, it'll look nice. Yeah. I mean, it will be nice. It'll be quality made, and um, you know, I'll put a lot of effort into making them right. Um, and then we will uh, see. That's it. That's all I can say. Really, we, we will see what we will see. So we'll see what we we'll see. So, uh, but yeah, I think we will definitely go with that because we are in France, and you changed your mind already. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you heard it here. Heard no, it but here. we are in France, and we want to try and get that French feel. It's hard. Wherever we can, yeah. yeah it, it's, it's hard difficult. if you're not having French opening inside windows. Yeah, definitely. And generally speaking, to most people around here that we've made friends with now, they complain about the windows they open in, but they're always mm. leaking. They have leaking problems, water coming in, and they're very, very hard to make, um, especially older ones, yeah. to make uh, totally waterproof. Right, it's because of the way they are, and I understand that when it rains, yeah, they all used to shut their shutters, and then the rain, mm. uh, the shutters took the sh took the rain, and then they'd open them up yeah. again. But we don't want to be doing that, you know. We we live in modern times now, and but I must... we just don't want to be spending all our time opening and shutting shutters yeah. when it rains each time, you know. But I must say, of the French windows, obviously, one good thing is is cleaning them isn't yeah, it? Oh, fantastic yeah to open the window inwards like, is so much easier up isn't it? ladders didn't we in england trying to clean the windows and and they're beautiful looking yeah but also i love their mechanisms the way the windows close oh they're and just the fantastic they're so you've so got beautiful. you've got a handle in the middle you turn it yeah and one shoots up one shoots down yeah, and it locks it in yeah and uh, the, uh and when i make some of the casements mm. i might even incorporate that into ours yeah but opening out yeah right but I might incorporate that in there, mm. and I might also, uh, in France, where the two two sashes meet in the centre, you normally got a half round and, and a ball nose, so that one goes into the other, so they come in and they close into each other. Yeah. I've got the facility to do that in different versions mm. and sizes, so I could look at that as well, but that's a later on project for further on along on the other side of the house. But this part... yeah. It's been rattling our brains. We've been changing our minds daily, uh, thinking about it at night, you know, and I think we've come up now with <coughs> six me. panes over six panes will look proportionally right. Mm, it will give us a chance to, if there's a fire or any problems, to open the window, get out. Yeah. Um, it also allows us to open the window, reach out, pull the shutters shut, lock off the shutters, pull the windows down, lock up the windows. Yeah. So it's a win-win situation, I think. Definitely, 100%. I think we will be going with that. Because you'll get functionality, definitely proportionality and e everything working properly yeah. anyway that's a bit long-winded on the old uh, windows and caravan corner again <laughs> but hope you enjoy this one yeah. and stay with us keep watching it uh, i know there's people out there that hate looking at woodwork or hate no, uh, seeing construction hate, i'm not hate they? but there's some people who it, it won't hold their <coughs> attention because you can see it on our views you get yeah. le we're getting a little bit less views um because probably people don't like that sort of thing but we want to finish that and it is part of the renovation and it's part of what we do but that is know? a very big part of the renovation really yeah. the woodwork because the doors the windows if you make well, staircases for the middle part of the property as well so well it's in, very i important. mean renovations <clears throat> you know you're buying everything in yeah definitely. you know today it's easy to go and buy it from a factory and it comes in plastic and they just whack it in and it's done yeah. right uh but this is bespoke. And this is be bespoke. bespoke it's going to be individual for the house. Um, and also, it's a bit traditionalist, you know, going back to the old ways of mm. doing things, which I've always done anyway. And, uh, you know, make it yourself. Because, you know, when you stand back, when I stand back and I look at this house when it's finished and go, well, I've done everything. Tracy and me, we put all our effort in and we've got it to where we want it. And it's yeah. how we want it. And then when it goes on into the future, to our family, family they'll remember us because we, we did it. Yeah. 
for ourselves. them really as and it's well, for them as well as us future. like yeah, yeah anyway that's uh, getting without getting morbid yeah we're here now <laughs> we're here now we're so alive. we can enjoy it but uh, <laughs> anyway guys that's enough for caravan corner ciao, and we will ciao. see you hopefully wednesday yep and have a good weekend watch and, your space and don't forget to like share and subscribe and, and tell, tell your all, mates tell all your friends and even if you just like it keep liking please because it does help us yep okay ciao ciao bye bye right just pop up and see what tracy's doing now she's done all the beams so uh you know so what are you up to now i'm just oh just having a break from the windows it's nice and bright isn't it yeah i've just given one coat to the ceiling Oh, lovely and if all along here i've not been too meticulous well i've actually yeah. had this plastic on the front side of the beam because you're going to run a bead a bead along there aren't you yeah um i've given one coat here i know you said you're going to line this didn't you yeah yeah and put paper on now, always you always put a blitz coat on plasterboard yeah always whether you're lining painting yeah whatever you always blitz coat we've always done that haven't we yep. anyway so i'm just finished this bit and I'm going to move all this lot over and then tape this side of the beam and do the same on here. On the far side, yeah. But that'll be it. And then once you've fitted the windows, which I'm really excited about, <laughs> and we get the coving up, yeah. then I'll blitz the ceiling again, two coats with the coving. But what I'm going to do is cover the window in plastic because I don't yeah. It doesn't matter how slow you roll, you will still get. I see. I can see our only problem with the windows yeah. is getting glass. Yeah. Now we know that you can get it up at um, near Mortan. Yeah, and there's one other place but I've heard of as well. Is do you have to order it and wait? I don't know. So we're going to have to wait there. Um, but I've got plenty of putty, so we don't need no putty. You can show and, them uh, well how you double hand putty yeah? yeah oh yeah that'd be showing off and i it? like constantly <laughs> love the smell i always mix yeah. soften your putty up trace used like... to be my mixer she, she used to mix all the putties up for me and then i'd be doing all the glazing so if i was doing like 40 or 50 panes a day in the workshop do you remember yeah, i remember that big tubs yeah and i had great big tubs and i used to get tracy to mellow them all up so she'd <laughs> wear her hands out like but muscular soft, though, but they used to make your hands really conditioned didn't yeah, they because the linseed oil yeah well. i was the putty painter <laughs> Put, yeah do you like my cover yeah like yeah that's it keep your hair clean you have to though, don't um you? but that's that's already looks bright doesn't it, it just does. with a bit of uh, that blitzing on the ceiling so and don't do no more on the ceiling no, no, now no, until no. i've done the coving yeah no, i just said that no i know you said that but i just want to make sure that no i wouldn't anyway. that they understand but as well this has actually i know this doesn't matter here but the first coat is actually covered quite well yeah but what it does is it seals it all as well it seals yeah. the pores in you know look and how uh cream get, that looks. sorry how cream that looks now the cream stands out more yeah. doesn't it yeah the cottage cream yeah yeah it looks nice it reminds you of a, what they call it clotted cream clotted cream yeah with jam oh lovely yeah <laughs> but yeah so it's, it's looking good there, all right then Traby. i'm Shout gonna crack out. on now just get a drink and i'll go back to it yep and i've got to go up roy's today and collect some sheep wool and what are you going to use that for that's going to be to insulate my bee boxes when i make mm, them up lucky bees but uh while he's cutting it off the sheep i might as well have it they'll be more insulated than we are in yeah. the caravan. okay folks so we're on now part two of uh putting this boxes together now because we've uh made all our components to for the box uh except the pipe being staff beads <laughs> But uh, the rest is all uh, ready to put together now. So on the seal, I've done the cutting out, as you saw in the last video, um, just to, to accept this. Now, this is where we use the rod, okay? So when I want to know the length for this poly style that sits in here and sits in the head, okay, I have to go back to the rod rather than try and do it with mass because it, it, it can get... Um, what's that word? It can get complicated and you start getting confused if you keep going back to measuring 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 all the time so if you have a fixed measurement so i know that this pulley style is going into this seal this deep from the drawing that's that that mark there okay so i put that there then i come up to the other end so this is the head now that will go this way in relation to that it'll go this way okay and i know that this gets let into the head to this point here okay so then i can i know that from there to that other measurement down there is the measurement that these should be cut at and have been cut at so they're ready now 
to go into the head and the seal which is there I've put this uh, board here I've got it nice and flat so I can get a nice flat finish on the uh, boxes so they go uh, they don't go in what we call racked uh, or out of square as well so I'll keep them in square and I'll stop them being racked racked is when they're twisted like that okay so uh, that's that bit we'll come on to the next bit in a bit okay so next bit I've started to put the pulley, uh, pulley styles into their housing joints and all I do is I countersink two holes in the back and tosh screw we call it or uh, at an angle right toe now sometimes it's called screwing so you screw it at an angle and into the seal it goes about halfway down into the seal as well as glued so it sits in there's a lovely strong joint uh, this would be the inside face when it's fitted, but this is just sitting on there to give me a guide, okay? Um, so that's the first part of putting these boxes together, okay, when you made them. So the next bit I'll be doing now is I'm going to countersink drill these. I won't show it because it's just countersink drilling anyone could do. Um, so I'll just countersink drill into there, pull this out, put the glue in, push it back in, square it up here to 90 degrees screw it in and that's that part done and then you can start to see it slowly come together and then the next phase part of this will be sorry is the head so i'll put the head on it's just literally two screws in the top in the housing joint um and then that's part that part done then my next part will be is to put these face frames on here so if i go and get one and show you uh bear with me so they're all over here at the moment just grab one of these so the next part will be these will start to go on here <coughs> these parts will go on the face here okay so they come down onto here there's a, a an angle it's roughly 15 degrees oops just hold that on there there's a roughly 15 degree cut here to, for that slope, right? That, them slopes, by the way, I might not have told you that, but you always want them between 12 and 15 degrees sloping away, okay? Um, 12 to 15, it's not critical, but it's within that, that angle. Um, so this here, this face frame, will be cut uh, at 15 degrees at the bottom, then that will slot in nice and neat into there, and sit flush like so, okay? And then on here, I just nick out a little bit of the bead so the water doesn't sit behind this uh, part here, you know, when the rain's coming down and hitting this seal going off. And then you get a little bit of overhang. Let me just try and show you that somehow. Uh, sorry for the quick movements. So you get a bit of overhang here. I don't know if you can see that, but I'll, I'll flip it over anyway and show you. Anyway, basically that's that. So you get the face frames on, which are these face frames. And then once they're on, I flip the box over and then we get into a little bit more intricate stuff where we cut the uh, traps out. So the traps are going in here and they're to, to get access to get inside the boxes when they're in position. Anyway, I'll show you that bit a bit later. So let me get the box skeleton made up and then um, we'll start putting the face frames on. Okay, right, now I've got the face frame on. I've fixed it on. I've got my rebate under here. Look, if I show you this side. So underneath there, this is what the sash sits up to on the outside, on the top sash, and the bottom sash sits up to the uh, parting bead there. Okay, so there, this is a critical distance in here to here. Okay, um, so you keep it the same all the way around. Right, and I'll cut the head in now as well. So the head, use a bit of carpentry. trickery. <laughs> I like that word. Right, um, so basically, 
I cut a mitre on this bead here, which is fixed to this style. Okay, I cut the mitre in there and then I let the head in to meet on a mitre. So this is a mitre bit here. Let me take it off and show you because I haven't fixed this bit. So you can see that that's the mitre on there. And then there's the mitre on the, on the frame. Let's just put it up. And also that critical, critical measurement you need to know in here where the sash sits in inside here as well. Okay, so we're up to that stage. So I'm gonna fix this now. Um, flip the box over and start cutting the traps in. You'll like that, it's interesting. I would just like to uh, point out another issue uh, that you must check and it's really important. You know, I'm, I'm only saying this for like budding carpenters who wanna get into the trade or men and women, whatever, you know, but, this here, this is a square, what I call a squaring rod, all right? So I put a real heavy screw in one piece of the wood on a little chamfer there, okay? And all I use this for is just squaring up boxes. And I'll tell you how I do it, all right? So if I can do this with one end, I put that, that um, screw into a corner that I know is gonna be a permanent corner there. Then I bring it down. Let me try and show you. So here, all right, I bring it to this point here. And I do the same on the other corner, to the corner, right? And if you see, I've got a straight line with an O and a straight line with a Y, all right? And what that is, is one is one corner, one is the other corner. I want to get to the center, which is the X, marks the spot. <laughs> anyway, so that line there with the X is where I want to go to, and that's where that's finished. Don't just go back in there, I ain't in the corner yet. So, get down. As you can see, that line now lines up with that corner. It's fixed, the top's fixed now. So what I do is I use this tool here, and I just toenail it or nail it in. A slight angle shooting away and into the box so it doesn't come out the face on the inside if you like and that's fixed now so this is that part fixed i just need to show you that because that is another crucial part you need to know if you're going to have an attempt at making some of these boxes and i'm sure a few of you will okay next bit so i've fixed the face frames and i've turned the boxes over now we're going to tackle the um the trap doors to get the weights in and out. And the trap doors come in here to just up there. And I'll show you what I've done. Um, so hopefully you can see this because lining works really hard to see in video. There we go, yeah, just see it. So this and this line, this is centre. Okay, so I make a, I get a marking gauge, which is this, and I centre it. So if I straight a line like that or go that way, it'll be dead center. This this pin, uh, can I point to that? This pin here is, is in the marking gauge is center of the timber, okay? So that gives me the bottom of the trap door. And how I determine this space is I just put my square on there. And I put it either side of the square. It's normally an inch in, the, in old school. Um, in carpentry when they taught us in back in college back in the day wow 80s early um that was how they taught us to do it, it was one inch across there okay and then coming up this end this is the top of the trapdoor now this is the tricky bit because what i do is first of all to find this position here i measure the overall width inside the box I come down four inches or roughly anywhere between two to four inches from the bottom of where the sash will be up the top okay at the top of the sa top sash so it's the bottom of the top sash position and i drop it below that so i can get access without having to move another sash out of the way um or if things are in the way there right so it's just a thing we do <laughs> anyway so what i do is i make a mark I come halfway again with my marking gauge in here and then from there I square that over square it down you'll see this when I cut it out the same on this one over here so I've squared it down here just past center and the groove that's on the inside there which I'll show you over this side because I won't rather turn around that groove there 
is where it's cut to, right? And then how I find this angle here, it's just a standard 45 degree angle, which is done with my square again, okay? It comes off there, and that takes, I strike that to the center, to there. Now the tricky bit is, I have to cut from here to here, obviously going down inside this groove here as well, which is a really tricky cut. I have to cut the back in the same, but only to halfway down, yeah? And the same up this end. So this one here, I cut halfway, only this from there to there, and same on the front side, so I don't create no, no damage onto this bit, yeah? Try and minimize that as much as you can. So I cut that out, cut that out, and then I cut a line through the center of the, where the part e, uh, part B goes. And then I put a chisel down here, and I pop that, because that's been cut in there and there, this should pop. In pine it pops well, but uh, oak is a little bit funny because it can twist the grain. So we'll give it a go and we'll see. If worst scenario it goes wrong, I'll just take that whole bit out and make a new piece quickly. <laughs> but it ain't gonna. Right guys. Okay guys, right, so I've started cutting this one now. This is this angle here. Let me just drop my saw in so you can see. So that's that's the angle I'm cutting at, but I'm stopping up against this shoulder here so I don't cut through, right? And this is my old saw, but it's, it's still good for this sort of job. So remember, I put a bit of wax on. We talked about wax on screws. You also put it on your saws, okay? So you get a nice run in there. And then what I do is I just take my time, drop that in. And I'm cutting down to that line there. I'm nearly there anyway, anyway, before I start filming. And that's it, I stop there, all right? I'm gonna do the reverse cut this way, coming up, but I'll turn it over for that. And then coming down here, if you pop down here, that line there, I'll give you an idea of how I do it. I've got to sort of hold the box because the box wants to move over, so. Start on the line, nice and slowly. Keeping it at an angle first, so you drop down onto this line here, but not go past this over here, all right? See, I'm starting to just nibble at the back now so I can get lower than this, this side here and I can bang up to that a little bit then now it's all about taking time being accurate and I'll tell you why I'm doing it with this saw in a minute if I get this cut done so I'm nearly down now Cutting down the bottom there, and there, I'm up to the line, right? So that's that done, right? But if you see the, the saw kerf, we call that the kerf of the saw, uh, that's the width, is very, very narrow, okay? And when I cut the back, it doesn't matter, I can use a bigger saw to cut the back. Then I put my chisel in here, and I split it, like I said. But before I do that, I have to drill a hole here, a hole up the other end, and cut with a jigsaw all the way down that center, so this becomes loose to that part of the frame. And the reason I leave them tight is, is visually. So when you're looking from the outside, it's a nice tight joint. It doesn't matter at the back as long as the front is. I count a sink a little screw here, push it down, screw it flush. Um, so this holds this, clamps this together. And then up the top, you'll see that little V joint. And what that does is, if I try to lift the box out, when it's all loose, it won't come out because that V stops it falling out and it sits back on that shoulder and it won't come in and out. So nothing's up here is mechanical. It's just working by a joint that's holding it together and then the bottom is done by one screw. Hope you understood that. Got my glasses on as well. <laughs> you won't <laughs> Can't see without these when the close-ups. <laughs> I've just had to take my um, carrier bag off my head because I'm just starting to paint. Well, <laughs> this, is the, this is the tricky bit with uh, making <clears throat> the boxes. And then there's some tricky bits making the sashes. And we've decided we're going to put horns on these windows on the top sashes only. So we're going to think of a little design. Uh, I'm not sure yet. There's, there's many designs that I've used in the past, but 
We're going to try and make something suit here, maybe, you know? Yep. Anyway. And are we, we at the... 100% sure on what we want to do as our design? I think so. Yeah. I think we're going to we'll go with the panes we're talking about. Yeah. I'd like to say to do that as a bit more of a, a reveal to the when I make the sacks. Yeah, because we, we've sort of put a bit together and we realise that it will look lovely, won't it, yeah. when it's done. Fantastic. Anyway, hopefully you understood that bit. And I'll show you when it's cut out. And, and this is what we call an entrance uh, socket or a uh, trapdoor uh, uh Bot on a box or whatever you know there's loads of names for them but basically it just gives me access to put my weights inside the back if you just pop down there trace with it right so when this is out i can move this out and i can get access to it inside of here for when the weights run up and down yeah trap doors what we're talking about so they're here so i can get access into the weights um, sorry the film cut off a minute ago so yeah we're, we're trying to carry on with it now. someone pressed the button which yeah. was me <laughs> okay so so we've got, um, that, that gives me access to in here to put the weights on down, and I'll show you that. And also, when I put the weights in and balance the sashes, which is another little tricky job, I'll show you how I make up what I call a cradle in the cording, right? Which is another thing us carpenters do to speed up the process of cording up as well. But that will come later. Okie dokie. Hope it's still interesting. Yes, <laughs> I'm sure they will. Good. Chat to you soon, Budo. Okay, I know I'm going on about these traps a bit, but um, it's the last bit now, last segment of the traps, all right? So, that's the trap, it's cut out, so I can take it out. You can see there's a house there, housing, or lap joint if you like, lap joint on the back of that. And then you can see how this goes in this end here. So that hooks in there, that's, that would be upwards. And that can't come out you can't move it now right then you sit that onto its position there and remember what i said about always put a bit of wax on your screws so i'll put the way i've pre-drilled this already and then i'll just screw that in i'm sorry i'm using a phillips on this one but i can't find no tiny little screws with slotted heads on that that along uh, because they come out the back of the box here and I don't want them to hit the weights when the weights are in there Basically, that's it. I will get some eventually. I'll put them in um, And that's solid That can't move and then you put your parting bead in there Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt and you're done Anyway, looks nice and discreet though. If you look at it Yeah, it looks nice and discreet. You don't see it. It's just a line there and a line at the top And that's it and that's your trap into your boxes. So if you didn't know that Go and have a look at your box sash windows if you've got any and see if you can go and find them um, them traps. They're always a bit at the bottom on the inside. That's the outside, inside. All right. <sighs> okay, that's it. Box made. Um, so I'll put the uh, in inside faces on now, which is here. And there's the traps in there, as you can see. And there's another one on the other side. Okay, so this is the traps here to get me in and out. Um, and that's it really, it's simple. Oh, it's simple-ish box. It's just about keeping it square. Uh, you've got a tolerance on these, right? You know, don't beat yourselves up if you do have a go at making these. You know, you've got probably three to four mil even tolerances. So, you know, out of square or whatever, because the buildings you're putting them in nine times out of 10, a lot more than that anyway and it gives me a chance to shave off some of these sides if, it, if I need to to get in that's why I leave the backs out at the moment as well because normally I put a covering back on here and the tongue goes in here there's a long thin tongue goes through here okay and that's to separate the weights but I'm leaving that all open because Tracy's going to oil all these up for us um, so she's going to cover them all inside out everywhere underneath the lot um so they get protected and then on the outside we'll paint over the oil when it's dry um so all i've got to do now on this box uh, is make the parting beads the staff beads which is parting bead staff bead goes on the end here and the little front bit of the seal uh let me whip it over for you you can have a little look uh, sorry about the camera there um so 
there we go that's the uh, outside face that's what you'll see on the outside a uh, little bit of filling the little uh, holes where the uh, uh, nails have gone in to hold it all together and glue and there you go probably a little bit long-winded this just to show how to do a box but hopefully uh, you can understand that and uh, in the future anyone wants to make a box or make these they can follow along and there we go I'll give you one more uh, one more view of this temporarily in its position there's a window in there already so I'm just going to push it up against the window and show you the downstairs window where I made the shutters this pushed in the front so you get an idea of its size okay so just pushed the window box in place just wedged it in there for a second the old window's still in there obviously if you ignore that but this is just to give you an idea of the proportion of the box uh, how it will look in the wheels and then the sash coming central roughly with two big panes at the top two at the bottom maybe not sure yet still thinking about that one but that box has to go far enough back when that window comes out obviously that these shutters can shut flush with a good gap behind them so there's no uh, interference with the box and the shutter as well as the uh, the, the seal this seal here when I put the new set the other seal on top of this seal which comes down to here and here and comes out these shutters will then uh, they will then be cut down at the bottom so they sit over the top of that seal so what will happen is well, we've got farm tractors going everywhere here um, that what will happen then is is the water that runs down the shutters will hit the seal as well and they will run off and keep off the wall as well uh, well that's my plan anyway so there you go little taster till next week when i'll um start on the sashes for you all right i might have a midweek one again not sure but definitely if not we'll have a real good one at the end of the week for you uh, on this box all right thank you for watching